All right, we're heading out. Headed to Iowa. Drop this off to my buddy, Ryan Lusk. Eastbound, heading to Iowa. It's gonna be a fun trip. We got a couple of chases lined up. We're gonna be meeting up with Richard Rollins at Gas Monkey Garage in Iowa for a couple of Mustang Fastbacks. We meet up with Kelderman regarding a 1969 Charger 500 that we're buying off of him. To get a tour of his shop. And then we head south from Iowa down to Texas, drop off our load, head over to Dennis Collins, pick up a couple of e-body convertibles, a 70 Cuda and a 71 Challenger. And then we're heading east to Louisiana for a Plum Crazy numbers matching motor project 70 Challenger TA that's uh, in a million pieces, but uh, looks to be super solid and uh, been owned by the same guy since the 80s. So we'll be able to get the story hopefully on that. Some people don't want to talk to us on camera or don't want their stuff shown on camera. So we can only go with what is that people say, you know, that they agree to because we would never want to disrespect anybody or put something out there that wasn't uh, something that they were okay with. So at the end of the day, some of the stuff may be on camera, some of the stuff may not be on camera based on the wishes, wants, desires of the people that we're um, getting the cars from. Uh, the cars are first, the video is second. So we're, we're interested in chasing cars, whether we're on video or not. Um, the only reason that we're doing the video now is to take you guys along with us. We, we had a lot of people over the years say, YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. So we finally were able to, with Aaron, uh, set it up where we could get the YouTube videos, but we're finding that not everybody wants to be uh, on YouTube. So um, it just depends on the people that are selling us the cars. With that said, um, it's gonna be an exciting trip. It's gonna be probably about 10 days by the time we drive across country to Iowa, do the deal with Richard Rollins and Gas Monkey, um, and load those cars up, and then head over to Kelderman's or hit him first and then them, depending on how the timing works. And then head south to Texas, unload that stuff. Well, it's a lot of driving, uh, but you know, driving it to me is part of the fun. Actually, it's probably most of the fun just because we get to see so many different places in America. America has a lot of beautiful country to see and uh, most people unfortunately don't get a chance to see it so we try to get a little bit of that in our video because we want to show America um, and show the flags and show the patriotism of the flags that are flying all across America and then also uh, hopefully we'll meet some people along the way and, and uh, get a video for everybody so looking forward to it it's gonna be a blast and hopefully we'll have it done by Friday So check this out. Dude rolls up, has a Pierre card in. That's what they call that, right? Yep. My buddy Rob loves these cars, man. And his buddy just got done restoring one. So That's awesome. right on, dude. Thanks yeah. for stopping by. Yeah, no nice problem. Nice to see you. Nice to meet you. All right. Get you. it up. <laughs> So they failed, they didn't videotape it, so it didn't happen, but we just freaking backed down this driveway that Ryan sent me to. Say hi, Ryan. So we're dropping off this 71B. Oh, I guess this guy's a Mopar guy. Check that out. Oh man. Oh, I like this. This is nice. We have one very similar to this. Oh, this is beautiful. Yeah, you want a 14 or something? Best part. Yeah, we let a six pack go at the at the Mecham often. Oh wow, that's nice. Look at that. 
Oh yeah, that's pretty. He does all of his own paint here, right? Yeah. yeah. 71 has a GB5 non billboard 384 speed with leather interior. Yeah, that's pretty. <laughs> Jake, Jake's probably not even following along anyway. Three eighty three four speed car, but now it's got a four twenty six. Wow, that's nice. <coughs> so that's the TA, huh? That's the Gator Green top one, right? Yeah. yeah. And it came like that factory, right? Yeah, that's my four B1G. Can't really get it in good on the video, but they can't be many of those, right? As far as I can tell, so far, some guys got this. Gotcha. Gotcha. Is this a real 440 Curious Yellow car? That's a real Promo Cuda. Wow. That one's Curious Yellow, front and rear spoilers, window louvers, 446 barrel automatic, billboards, H22. That'll be at the, uh, the billboard display at Mopars in the Park in June. God, that's pretty. From what I can see of it, got everything covered up. This is gonna be a nice build. That's a 71 Challenger convertible 318 knot car. It's now got a 390 stroker in it. Fitech fuel injection, SSPC disc brakes on the front. So he's not a purist. No. He likes to have fun with it. It's got a tanks tank for the EFI. Uh, Hellwig front and rear sway Steve, you got a hell of a collection. Nice work, bud. This one's a 74 and but it was known, he calls it Morphodite. Yeah. He crafted a 70 Cuda Sport Hood in place of the original <laughs> Power Bulge because it has a... It has a monster motor in it and needed the room, right? I think I heard about this. So is this a Super B, a Coronet, no, a Coronet a, RT? It's just a regular old Coronet. Coronet that he modified. He made, it, he made it into what he wanted. Standard black bench with a uh, pistol grip. And then it's got the... 472 with an odd man six pack. And then he built the hood to accommodate the, the height of the six pack because it wouldn't fit underneath the regular power bull should. So. so this is what he calls Blue Boy. This is a 70 Challenger TA, one of the factory uh, 989 four speeds. Um, it's original paint, original top. That's killer. He has put the seat covers on. I think the rest of the uh, interior is largely original. Our orange one is very similar to this. I think I think Tony's about ready to head my way right now. I think he's packed up. Yeah, it's about, is it about three o'clock now? Four o'clock? Very cool car. So what is this? That's a 70 Cuda. It's a three to three four speed car, B5 white interior. That car came in and it was rough. That's got, that's got the AMD catalog in it, so. He does nice work. Yeah, this is his 1961 Dodge Dart Pioneer. This is his little cream puff. He calls it Snow White. <laughs> so. so Steve let us come by and check out all his cool rides. And uh, although he wasn't here, but we left him a gift. We appreciate you uh, letting us see your cars, brother. And uh, hope the jacket keeps you warm out here because it's cold, Ryan. It's way too cold out here. 6 p.m. Sunday. Leaving American Steel Classics, headed to Iowa. Just a little 10 hour drive up from Texas. See uh, Troy up there tomorrow, pick up Aaron and Davis at the airport. Go find some Mustangs and some Chargers and God knows what else. Here we go. How you doing, buddy? Hey, hey, How hey. was your guys' flight? Good? It's good.
How you doing, big dog? Good I'm to see you. Great. Good, Good to see you, man. Good to, Good to see, see you, see you guys. guys. Yeah. I well, these came all the way from California. I know you did. <laughs> Delivering coat from California to Iowa. Yeah, let's put this over here so we don't... I remember your buddy liked the red one, so I brought we brought him a red one. So this is for your buddy. That's fine. But if you want the red one, because you got extra large, right, on accident? No, the two that I got, yeah. They're extra we, large, we right? We got extra large. Okay. And oh. then, there it is. Last one, of course, right? Hey, so all that's right. yours, okay? You bet. God, thanks. And I'll go Always get good seeing you, two. brother. Always good seeing you. I'll get it. All right. So we told him over and over again, he's a, he's a large. And he said, no, we're an extra large, both of us. And we said, no, you're a large. And we're wrong. <laughs> we brought your jacket. I don't, know awesome. I don't know if it'll, uh, I don't know what your size is, but they run a little bit big. So try it on. No, it's, I'm sure I'm not, I'm not a huge guy, so. That's it? Yeah. Perfect. Hell yeah. Right on, dude. Part of the team now. Yep. Can't turn around. <laughs> Perfect. All right, let's go Very in. cool. Very cool. You guys already got the D100 from him? Holy shit, look at this place. Damn. But the other side of that wall is our powder coating operation. And between the, the spray foam and that, you, you could, it gets hot in here in the summer, I mean, in the winter. Wow. Now It's nice in here. Now, man, the, you know, cool off on the weekends, if yeah. you want. Know. How you doing, bud? Good. So this is where we obviously build the trucks. And look at so this how place. Many, how many trucks do you guys physically put lift kits on versus how many lift kits do you sell? Like a small fraction? Well, of yeah, I would less than, I mean, probably 5% yeah. is what's installed. Gotcha. But as far as, you know, we do we do more you know stock height and rvs and horse trailers and stuff like that than we actually do you know 10 to 12 inch dodges gotcha, like that guy yeah, over there gotcha. but you know the big the big stuff's what everybody likes to look at yeah this is the building we need right here for our dealership yeah this is why we went to make them raise mm -hmm. some capital yeah too bad so he's in texas we still, yeah <laughs> everything where we're at is just crazy money but yeah sure this, crazy this money built, out here now yeah, well we built this this section so this is the newest section as we go that way it gets older gotcha but this section of this shop is 200 by 250. jeez that would be amazing so you know we got our, got our lifts over here the barn is you know offices for for install <laughs> this is where we we build the air control you know I, and somebody has some race car tires i imagine <laughs> So these are just all air control systems here. Depending on what applications, like like these are dual compressors with a dryer. So these these are typically going on a chassis cab truck because the rear air ride will do, well you ha contain four airbags and the front will have two. So this would be controls for that. Um, like this style of compressor here is used on a, like a Sprinter, Mercedes Benz Sprinter. Mm. So we do a lot of Sprinters probably Probably 500 a year. Wow. Okay. Uh, we only install them here. These all go out. Most of them go to Gretsch Motors based out of Riverside. Um, they, they do a lot of sprinters, whether limo sprinters okay. or whether they're um, uh, campers. But they're all 3,500 dualies. So you can just see that's kind of the compressor box. Yeah. Then we also yeah. do a lot of paint here. We paint custom bumpers. Okay. Our, our bumpers will make it. So, so you can see right here. Um, you know, a lot of guys will, you know, like Platinums and uh, the Limiteds will have the silver tailgates on the back. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll, we'll paint them different it's colors. It's amazing to me how clean this place is. Paint the letters. It's a challenge I being bet. out here. So we've got two pits. This is one pit. So this is where we'll do like an RV or horse trailer install. Okay. But there's some, you know, finished up trucks right here. Jump Waiting for customers. I think we get them from everywhere, dude. I mean, we got this from bet. Virginia. This, this truck here is i don't know i think i'm just obviously the wheels aren't on it so we're waiting on the wheels but that's our own bumper design yeah, our so. own wind you know that's got 16.5 winch that's a dude you're ready to take down a house with that thing <laughs> yep Jeez. yep and then uh as you can see by us doing a three-piece bumper uh-huh you can color match do different looks and, yeah. that's, you know so god that's a monster this guy this is the third truck we built for this guy 
this is this is like a brand new. Yeah, it's brand new color. This is 2024 colors. So like this is the the chassis cab I was telling you about how it has two bags on the rear. Right. And then look, the there's the rocks you're talking about. Yep. Oh, so, so this whole plate here is your system. Yep. Uh, okay. So by doing that, see how we box that frame in? Yeah. So that way you don't have any hot spots, you know. Pull this over. It's, it's it's you know, and then you got a frame here. To, you got reinforcements here to go with this cross member that ties all this in. It's um, this way. Build build stuff for 25 years. You you figure out what yeah yes. what works and what, 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 yeah, what, what doesn't. Well, we just did. I just did Dennis Collins the first 5500 he's got, and I'm oh. doing his second oh, okay. one. Okay, cool. I'm doing his second one. I don't know any day, I guess. And then Richard's black truck has our suspension on it too. Got a lot Is of that nice the one stuff. you race the most? That one's for sale. Yeah, I'm, I am selling that because I just got another one. So I've, I've got four Vipers right now. So I'm a little heavy we got four on inventory. In the but yeah, this thing runs pretty good. It's got a brand new motor in it too. So are they all in age? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, for this figure. This one's 635 rear wheel. That's enough. <laughs> but yeah, it, they're, they're fun, man. I mean, this full, fully caged. Cam, mm. or yeah. built motor Vipers just sound, I mean, obviously, it's a they it just sound crazy. Yeah, and uh, they're just torque monsters, you know. Yeah. This one, I am going to miss this one because it's the only one I have with two seats in it, so you can actually, um, you know, get a, get somebody else in here or get some coaching, you know. Like I've, you know, I've I've been able to, you know, have Boris said run this and ride around with him while he's with, with little earpieces talking back and forth, and yeah. just like, you know, he. Yeah. It's like you're going faster than that, a lot faster, a lot faster, especially on a new track you're not familiar with. You do a ride yeah. along with a pro that you and a track you have been on. Oh, V10. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is how it came back from Sebring. I have not washed it or done anything. It just got back a couple days ago. And uh, I just brought it on here because uh, I wanted to scale it and, and check, check the alignment after, after racing after it. Racing it. So... I made these headlights for for Rinks that we ran the six hour. Me and Boris said, and this kid, and uh, so we wanted some brighter lights. So that's just a metal plate on there with ridges, and that's that's 3D printed. printed. Yep, oh, okay. 3D printed pockets. Crazy cool. stuff we can do nowadays. Mm -hmm. Printing that stuff. But yeah, I mean, when you hit the brakes, this is how hard that front end dies. It's nuts. Wow. Really? Mm-hmm. Jesus. And it's usually just on one spot at Sebring because you're coming. Basically, you're coming down from 140, coming into turn, out of six, you'll get up to 140, coming into turn seven, then you'll just mash the brake down to right around 40 mile an hour and do a U-turn and, and do the pinwheel and then go. So you're, wow. you're hard on the brakes and she's dropping down. Sweet, man. That's awesome. Yeah. Where's the new one? This is, is that here too? We're going to go yep. check that out next? Yep. We'll, we'll, we'll kind of mosey through the <laughs> shop and... Now this is my Toter home. Believe it or not, so we just bought this back a year ago. My dad built this. He's all excited because he loves Toter homes. <laughs> my dad built this in 2000, 2001-ish. Just took a you know, fifth wheel and put it onto a frame and extended <laughs> it and all that stuff. Just built it. That's badass. And then my dad used it for four or five years and then sold it to a friend of his in Houston. And that guy used it probably four times in... 15 years, they just sat, you know, a, a hangar, a, you know, junkyard and big hangers and stuff down at this airport down outside of Houston. So, dad mentioned to me out of the blue, he's like, yeah, Elliot said he'd sell the Peterbilt and had a white stacker behind it, uh, back, you know, from da da da. And, you know, I'm like, what the hell, you know, dad's got a big Prevost now. So I'm like, what the hell do you want that? You know, so I walk out of his office, got about halfway down the hall and like, there I know is. exactly what he want that for. <laughs> so turned around, went back in, he's like, how much? So we ended up buying that thing and going to flying down and getting it um, a year ago, November. So it'd be, you know, 14 months ago and then drove it home. And then I completely gutted it and put a wood floor in it. Robert, who had that white truck outside, he did right. the interior. I put a big stereo in it. You can see the speakers, the eight pillars, I 3D oh. printed those. Oh, yeah. So we put a nice stereo in it and then uh, used it down to Sebring and brought home. And I totally re gutted it, remodeled it. and. Uh, Put granite countertops in it, and Amish had an Amish guy Can make all black countertops. It's South Dakota or North Dakota that you have a place at? Yeah, South Dakota. South Dakota. We, well, yeah, we're outside of Deadwood, so no, we we drive out there, and 
I couldn't get that thing a hundred yards up the trail where, where the house is. Gotcha. It's, it's, <laughs> it's clear top of the mountain yeah. overlooking. We have a, a big log I cabin. A video. I think you sent me a video, right? Yeah, the yeah, Aaron Lewis. Yeah, probably they're really cool. Yeah. That's, that's, on yeah. the, that's on the Kelderman YouTube channel, <laughs> by the way. Plug it. <laughs> Plug it, baby. Plug it. We're not amateurs here. Nope. Yeah, so we're no, we know clean, you're not amateurs. We clean, can see that. We're clean, clean this thing all up. And so actually, I'm going uh, tomorrow. I'm going to head to the Mid-America Truck Show. Um, we're doing front air rides on Peterbilt's now. Oh, okay. So I'm kind of unveiling that. I just We just started. We just worked <coughs> on that and got, a, got the kits figured out and tested it and all that. So we're unveiling that uh, this week. How many guys work here? About 70. 70, wow. Holy okay. shit. Seven zero. Seven zero. Yep. Wow. Inventory over here. Shipping's back there. You know, we got the powder coat system. We got flat laser, and then we have a tube laser. We just got tube laser last year. Instead of using a saw now, we'll just cut. You know, cut it on this thing, and it's just bam, 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 bam. Jeez. But you can do all kinds of cool stuff. Like look at that, dude. That's one machine. Does all that. That thing right here. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, it's quite a machine, dude. Machine. Look at yeah. this thing. Yeah. It's like this is badass. Yeah, so this is cutting right now, and that yeah. looks like it's cutting half-inch plate. Oh, shit. Can, Can you get that in there? Yeah. It doesn't really do it justice, though, huh? You can't really see what it's doing. Yeah. So, yeah, this is just kind of when people ask me what I do, I just say I just, I just build stuff out of steel. Cut it off. Fitting at you. But anyway, this is where shipping is. So, you know, powder coat was that big room I showed you guys from the back right. side. And then what they'll do is each kit will go on a table. There we go. So each kit is on a table, mm -hmm. you know, so. Smart. So like these are the kits for those 4,500 Chevys I was showing you. You know, this is a lift kit for, you know, a 2017 Ford, but and then we have our own line of shocks we have made too up in Minnesota. Wow. You know, cool. powder coat, we can do different colors, but you know, this is textured. textured. Right. So textured. did you start this business or? Well, my dad started the business okay. when I, I mean, really same year I was born, 1970. Wow. Um, but I, he was all ag stuff. You know, he did invent the first Kelderman Air Ride in 1990 when I was just in high school on the G1 Dodge. But, you know, I about 03, 04, I just kind of started steering more toward the suspension and the automotive stuff. And that's kind of when the trucks started becoming a little more popular, getting lifted. And back then it was just a big stack of leaf springs and they would ride like a dump truck. And I really had enough guys, just kind of people in the automotive industry who I knew they were just like, dude, you got to make an air ride. You got to make an air ride suspension lift kit. Yeah. And we started doing that and then we were all four link. And you know, every, nobody, everybody's looking at us like four link. What, what the hell is a four link? And now you go to SEMA, every single Drugs lifted down. truck is front and rear four link. Yep. And we did the first, you know, I don't want to say the four, you know, four link's been around since drag racing for years, but yeah. to put actually on a lifted, on a lifted truck. trucks, you know, we kind of kind of brought that to the table in 03, 04. It was kind of when that started 20 years ago. Wow, very cool. Wow. Wow. Yeah. I like that sign. Build it like it's your own. I have those. Yeah. I have those made like. That's so true, though. You know? out, Unfortunately, the world has gotten away from that. You know, they they build it like it's throw like it's disposable. Yeah, I think I do put that up in, in 1995. <laughs> so, so we make we have little fixtures, and they don't. They're not making them this. They only make them about once a month. But like our air tanks, here's a. So we bought that tube laser, and then we just bring the tube, you know, and pop, 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 you know, cut each end. And then we buy the caps, weld them on. So you got one rotate, the first one welds them on the end, the next one's a, you know, the fixture. You just put it and you hit the button and it just, just welds it up. But like these are parts for different air rides. I mean, so what's the other thing so awesome about that tube laser is everything's cut now as a chamfer. So the bushing goes here. You know, we used to do this with a torch or you'd stick in the machining center and a Dremel. Now, now it just it just speeds up the amount of stuff that can get cut in just a matter of no time. And then about three years ago, we bought our first robot. 
So this unit, I don't know what, I'm guessing sprinters, but you know, we have about six or eight parts that we weld on the robot now. And it cranks out some stuff. These are sprinter parts. I just sent Brandon a video and say, we get replaced with a robot, sorry pal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we teach that robot to build bodies. Yeah. I don't even know if I'd want to be responsible for all of this. What about you, Rich? I don't know. I don't, oh, I couldn't. This looks like. <laughs> that is for a water pump. Uh, this old product my dad had been making clear back from the 70s. That's what, that would be like if, if you're on river bottom and your field would get flooded and you need to move thousands of gallons a minute. That, that'll get a prop in the back and that'll come off and run off a tractor. Yeah. We'll kill them in water pump. Dad been making those for 50 years. This is a new product I'm in, uh, unveiling this week at the show. So this is kind of cool. One of a... Uh, so what this is, is, is that high control valve over here? Yep. So check this out. So on semis, you know, you got get your dump valve. You, know, you got a high control valve that keeps your, keeps it, uh, you know, the correct air pressure, you know, height in the airbags at all times, right? Well, they'll come with a dump valve so you can dump it. But on the fronts, You'll see on the guys that run the real low bumpers, a lot of times they'll flip a switch and they'll, they'll bring the bumper up so that it doesn't drag. So a friend of mine who does a bunch of semis was asking me if there's a way he could figure out how to hit a button and air up the airbags, you know, without using just a switch and then not knowing where you're at it the whole time. So we came up with this idea to run an air actuator and there's a little cam mechanism in here. So now there's a kit I'm going to sell. So you get your height control valve to keep it at right height. You got your dump, be able to dump all the air on it. But then you hit a bump, uh, a button right inside of the cab and that sends air here and that rotates this down 30 degrees, which calls for the height control valve tricks, changes the location. So the height control valve is going to add air. So it's going to lift all the air up in the front of the bags to lift it up four inches. I'll be done. So like pulling in the field with your semi so it doesn't scrape or if you're at the back 40 it's a flying J and you're hitting all the potholes you don't want to smash your bumper or you gotta climb the curb you know you hit the button and it turns that and it's gonna lift max out your airbags t -t -t -t, go around hit the button right height and right away there you go super sweet That's so neat. this is the first one this is the, the prototype the prototype yeah it's neater and shit too so that's uh so what's cool about this is that any Peter built, and so they start offering air, I think in 08 on the fronts. I can't remember the exact date, what year, but any front air ride truck, whether it could be any brand. Universal. Any brand, anything, you can put this on and away you go. go. Cool setup. Right over there on top. Yeah, of Mopar machine. country. Yep. He's a Mopar guy. I know it. <laughs> and I, I love your sign. I'll show you why, because I, I got to take you in my dad's office and I'll show you why, uh, why, why we are Mopar people. This is my dad's wall of fame, but so this is my dad's high school car. Oh man, this, that Dan was would be doing backflips for that. So that was a, that's a real lightweight. Oh wow. Wow. But so Ostrich ran this car, and then he kept the Hemi, and then my dad bought it off of him. And yeah, Dan uh, would be going nuts over. And then then Dad wrecked this, and then ended up in the eighties getting sold to. Uh, I got the guy's name up Minnesota, and he, he 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 restored it and tried to sell it back to me earlier this year. Gotcha. And I'm like, I I don't need that. We thought about it, my brother and I, but it was just like, I'm cool. This is like 1978, 79. So that that is like the Richard Petty of truck pulling. Oh my god. In gosh. the 70s. So he built that literally in the center you portion that of the on shop. You the the truck pulls. We, we go to it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so this is a really early picture of it here because it didn't have the baby elephant written on it. Um, and obviously the elephant was because of the Hemi motor. But this thing was so... F Dad built this around the rule book, okay? See how narrow the rear axle was? Yeah. yeah. I mean, they were inside the rear tire. You know, there's nothing about stance. So he cut the axle, made it as narrow as they could, okay? There's no... You know, he figured out where the rules could be, run the hitch as close to the axle as they want rule put the weights as far out he had so much weight on this thing that if it wasn't in four-wheel drive the, the rear wheels and grass would just, just spin 
and then this here this of this tarp right here so between the transmission and transfer case he ran a 10 percent there's a bunch of just combine gears made a 10 percent reduction so he could start out in second gear instead of low run up you know hit red line pop it drop it 10 percent just bam bam have that extra gear where it wouldn't drop and then then slam i think they were i think they're running 454 gears back then but i could be wrong but yeah wow. this didn't have a radio or anything it was just two frames they just ran the he water through like the tubes business on there look at him yeah. Look at his facial features like yeah, i'm going yeah this one this this <laughs> one well, first yeah, place is right next to his head 75 percent of the races he entered wow. you know pulls the energy one did he and it was it was just unbelievable how and again same thing it was just built around a rule book you know everybody else is just showing pickups and frames and big motors well so he actually, he actually got, put so some he, thought into he ran, it. ran two years and then they outlawed the jeep body so then um he put a dodge pickup on it and had to extend extend the framework a little bit but actually had a, a office fire in a, a building they somebody built down the shop burnt it down in 83 disgruntled employee came back but all I mean, there's hundreds of trophies in this thing, and all the magazine articles and everything. And this, this I mean, this literally is all there is left of this stuff. Oh, man. I mean, these pictures what right here are, are it. I mean, like that's, it. That's all that is left. And these were just a couple of them that were brought by by an old daughter. Other guy. people. Just people just showed up one day, like, look, I'm going through Dad's deal. Look, what we found so yeah. many pictures. You know, and then, you know, and then we always had street rods and hot rods and stuff. Why don't you grab some t-shirts? There's Angry yeah, man, I don't know where all the the black stuff is though. Yeah, but if you yeah, you're not you're free if you're cold, this would be the time to grab some hoodies right now. Yep, this this is I'm getting this one. Thank you, dude. Yeah. Appreciate it, bro. Oh absolutely. Absolutely. Then here you guys just grab some koozies and oh, you guys really yeah, want that's any badass. Look at that. Sorry. This is a real popular truck we built too back in two thousand uh Which four. Bought the Harley truck, did the big lift, and then my dad had these this bed lift on his truck, so we copied oh, it no, to be able to drop the. I don't know if you ever saw that at SEMA. This That's would have wild. been this would have been four or five bridge. SEMA. Yeah. No, I didn't go to SEMA until way later. I was. I was, I was I mean, look old, at so, look at these. No. So look, we had the Amprax in the roof, TVs everywhere, big back stereo stuff, and Large. we had look at we had TV screens and the bumpers. The reason all this stuff's in here is back in the day, you used to build this. You build your business through magazine covers. Oh, yeah. No. That was a big deal, getting that magazine cover. Yep. Yeah, so this it's is fun. my office. It kind of sets the personality of the of the business. I like your scooter. Yeah, can you believe I found that on Facebook Marketplace one time. Some of you have listed like 1930, 1940 scooter. I bought it because I had Indian motorcycle fenders. It was like, I paid like 35 bucks for that thing. Did you have one? No. <laughs> But I got a 1910 sled. Really? Isn't that cool? Yeah. That is an old, that's old, an old, old scooter. Dish. Yeah. So we got we got some if cool I remember, stuff in here. I used to leave a strip up my back when I ran it in the rain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Everybody had that experience. Yeah. Ten, especially like on a bike. So back here, here's another 5500 we were talking about. Chevy, it's, it's already done. See, so we need one of those. These guys trucks. with the crane, man, they. Beat the shit out of this thing. Look at all the oil and stuff all over this thing. So, <laughs> oh yeah, Damn. this is what I'm talking about right here. I, I understand the out of control oh. part. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you just kind of. We're joking. <laughs> yeah, so we've seen the bird and we've seen that, but we yeah, yeah there's but so seen. much going on at Macacken you don't really see stuff. You yeah, know, when you're there, you see a few things and. But, yeah, the, uh, the I mean, really, I mean, the GTX and the and the Dodge are the, what really are the have the most time put into them. Look at the stereo speakers in the center console. Yeah, so we did. I did a bunch of shows Phoenix Gold back. One in the thing day. about you, bro, is you definitely go over the top on everything. <laughs> it don't matter what it is, you're over the top. I love it. Put the electric fan on front. Just tried to make it as clean as we could, and just kind of machined a few odds and ends on this. But you just. Build this? Built this probably 2005. Wow. Is it a true GTX or is it a satellite? Oh, yeah. No, no, this is a GTX true convertible. This, yeah. I got to ask you a question on your sports car that you're racing. Uh huh. I'm surprised it doesn't have paddle shift. Well, uh, we'll, we'll get to that. <laughs> Most of them are s six speeds. Yeah. 
but the one I just bought, the black one, it had paddle. It, it's a sequential. It's they, they took the paddle out. They couldn't get it synced. Oh, but but it's it's a it's you know use a clutch to get going, and after that it's just bam yeah, bam bam bam, bam. It. which makes it really fast. Yeah. Now this this white car up here. Rutledge Wood had something to do with this car, right? Correct. Okay. Yeah, that I, remember I, it seeing, I, I think I can talk about. I about bought it from Rutledge. Okay. And but this was Kyle Petty's high school car. Uh, and and you bought this from Troy Hawks, right? Well. There's, of? there's a middleman in between there. Oh, okay. Bob, using my flashlight. That's not. That's not the one. I know it's you. mine. I have the ones charging. Sorry, Bob. We didn't. We didn't get them out of the truck. We'll use them tomorrow. We probably. <laughs> anyway. A guy, Six, named, a guy named Tony Tezek, '69. See, got the back glass. They only made the Charger 500 and 69. That's the real Charger 500. In right. 70, they made a lot of Charger 500s, but they were the same. It was just a trim package. Right. So this one is one of the what? 300 and something? 300 and 380. Yeah. Beautiful. Wow. Beautiful. 69. Mm -hmm. I got a original dry power intake manifold for one of them. Pop the trunk. The key's right there in the front seat. I think, shoot, there's a couple of covers in the back, I think, from when they had them in the... Like around 392. Yeah, three, that's what, that makes sense. Yeah, there are not very many. The last time I was in that trunk, I was grabbing beers. We were. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I, yeah. I thought of that the other day when I saw these, yeah, he, these he, in I, here. We got there, we were totally unprepared. And we, and we didn't even know you at the time. No. We, no. we met you through, through Dalton. Uh, Dalton, so this one's been the yeah. place. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and all of a sudden, we're drinking beers out of your trunk. I haven't even put 200 miles on it. And you've had it for like three years, right? Yeah. I almost bought it when it belonged to Troy. I literally flew into Texas, went, did a whole trip and everything, kept trying to get a hold of him. And I just, we couldn't mix it up. And then my flight, and I left, and, I never, and then all of a sudden, you must have bought it or somebody bought it. Well, I got it from a guy named Tony Teasick. Tony bought it from me. Look at that sign. <laughs> Which one? That Indian sign, that thing's bad. That's, yeah, that's just a dealership. Uh, yeah, that is that bad. That Gilroy. It so it's not numbers matching, right? The motor. No, they're... And the fender tag... Now, Dan Daniel said he had an original one when it was his. Yeah. Do you know what happened to that? or Does anybody know what happened to it? I have a picture of it. Oh, you have a picture of it? And I do not know where it's at. Here's a car. <laughs> Check this. I, this is a car, a car I built a while back. Or This was... Uh, 2020. Look at this old Roadrunner I had for the freaking race motor 440. Little Sold monster. it to a friend, friend of mine up in Minneapolis. So I made this video be, before he to picked it up. To send it to him. Hey, yeah. This is your sales. This was yeah. your sales video. Listen to that motor. Oh shit! You need to send that to me. I'll put that on Instagram. Be our first burnout on Instagram, right? Everybody complains we don't do any burnouts. <laughs> so Daniel's. Bill Sammy owned this for 26 years. Okay. Then sold it to Daniel, August 26. Okay. February 27, he sold it to Troy Hawks. He, did. he had it for a year, and then Tony Teza got it. And he bought it from him. Yeah. Uh, and it's like every guy that's had this car has sold it and upgrade, got a Hemi. <laughs> and they went to the next, the next big dog? Yeah. Except for you, I think. Well, my plan is when I got this, and then I want obviously, you know, wanted to get a Daytona. I want to have the, the trifecta. Yeah. And then we started doing this, and then yeah. then it That's just different. yeah. Change priorities. Mm-hmm. So when I had this on Facebook Marketplace, somebody sent me a link, and I swear I snapped, I I screenshot it, and I've looked it, I've looked, and I've looked, but somebody found like the ad that when like Troy or Daniel were selling this okay. and it had more detail and it said numbers non-matching but like the transmission was yeah, this is a, it's a 69 motor and a 70 trans okay well <laughs> is it an HP motor I don't think so it's a C bin which is like a C it's the plant so it'd be like a C -bin like a wagon like that. yeah So this thing, I got, yeah, I got this in 2001 out of, uh, I 
over by Iowa City. So I got this, I mean, I was 30 years old and I got this thing. And this one went to SEMA, right? Yeah. And this was a CES in the Phoenix Gold booth. This thing was just packed full of stereo gear too. Uh -oh. yeah. Everything I did, you know, we did it so that you could take it out. That's the best picture I took. I, of all the pictures I got, these are, these are the best pictures I got of it complete. I get it home, get it home, and those are the, two, the only complete pictures. This, this, I got this thing four years ago, and I'm just about done with it. I've put a new motor in this, a new wiring harness, new air conditioning, new interior, new brakes. That's a 408 stroker, and then that's an old school H stack, but I converted it over to Holly. So, always wanted a Pantera, and I came across this one, and yeah, they're they're go karts, dude. <laughs> yep, yeah. So, but I just got I got a four. I got a motor. Just got it. Just got it back. A four forty or a four forty source. One of the four ninety six kits, and um, so I had an old three eighty three block. So I had to build that. So that's getting a, a new motor with Aces fuel injection and. I got the CV serpentine belt with the new new air conditioner, new you know everything what, new. What's your favorite here? Of, of well, it's a, it's Superbird. You can't. I mean, right. you, that's just a dream car you have as a kid and to finally get it. Right. But you know this this old '92 Dodge. I did a fresh restoration on this about five years ago and had this on SEMA. And look at the paint on this. I mean, this is a really nice car. And. Uh, Yeah, yeah. This was a this is a five nine. This is a this got compound turbos. This is about about five hundred horse. Wow. wow. Yeah, and then check that out. So it's got all new. Oh yeah. It's got oh, all nice. new. Yep, I put steps oh, on nice. it. All new custom interior. So these didn't come in black, and they didn't have black interior. Wow. So I pimped it all out. So uh, we never finished the air conditioning on it. So that's what I'm doing now. Is we got let's, these are the new parts. We're going to get the air conditioning finished up. I love that you love going to seats. Yep. I built this. I mean, me and another kid. I mean, every night after work, we we. I decided like in, in April. This was an old rusty snowplow truck. So we. I decided like in April. You know what? Let's restore this thing and take it to SEMA. And all my guys in my shop are like, "You're not getting this thing done. Maybe next year." And I'm like, "No, we're gonna do it." So we just tore it apart. And I mean, the car we started with, none of the no body work. Uh, it's these. Are, this is a different box, different cab. Different hood, different, everything was too rusty. So we did a total, just cherry. That just had some guys down the road do it. I mean, yeah. Oh, they did a killer job on it. Really? Now, I'll tell you something about this. This paint job about five years ago was, was 25 grand, and that was at 60 bucks an hour. Then I made my own bumpers, you know, based off that. And, just a, just a really cool old old, old truck. But yeah, the, I mean the Super Bro, I can't, you know, you can never go wrong. I mean, that's that being an original 446 pack. And I built it too. I mean, it's, it's my first big car restoration. It's not perfect. There's a few runs in the paint. There's some stuff done wrong and I don't, it but like it's my first one. Though. Yeah, we get it out a little bit. Not as much as I probably should, but but I mean, I did. I wanted to make it my hot rod, you know. I did leather. I did leather interior in it because I wanted. I mean, you know, I, I did a quarter stick in it because I always wanted a hot rod with a quarter stick to slam gears. You know, we got the footprint gas pedal in it. You know, from the movie Joe Dirt. You know, you gotta have a <laughs> gas print. You know, and then I, did, I wanted a loud exhaust, so I put boom tubes on it from, uh, you know, you know, BSR boom tubes. Literally from from that, they came from Mooresville, North Carolina. You know. Sounds good. What? Yeah. What year did they have the little bitty pistol grip? 70. 70, 71. I got the handle. Yeah, 70, 71, 72. This car is, 
like 680 rear wheel. Yeah. Instead of eight four, this is the this is the nine liter. Yes. Fiberglass doors. This 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 car is. I just bought this. This is the old I added. You, if you can't beat them, buy their car. Yeah. Because. Uh, That's what you did. <laughs> this car is. Yeah. Really 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 fast. Let's see. Like I said, this has got the sequential, so you can just oh, so you're just on you it. can just bang gears, man. Yeah. You just, white like full throttle. You just keep her pinned, and you're just like bam, <laughs> bam, bam. Then coming in the corner, you know, slowing up, you let off, and you can just hammer the front gear, and it'll rev match just automatically. Oh, that's cool. But when you when you pull back, it cuts the coils and, and drops. It's 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 nuts, man. So that's a that's a that's a 1940 Scout. <laughs> So in 19, 1991, I got out my freshman year of college. I wanted to get an old Harley, and I started asking around town. And, and I mean, I was looking for you know 50s or 60s, you know, you know, probably an old shovel head. I probably wasn't gonna get a pan head, but you know, a guy told me, well, no, I know where there's an old Indian though. Uh, the guy outside of town's got, and he's it's for sale. Um, I, I said the first thing that I said, what, what the hell am I gonna do with an old Indian? And he's like, no, you gotta, you gotta fix it up and restore it, you know? Cause I've always bought wreck cars and fixed them up in high school. So I know how to turn a wrench. Long story short, this guy had this, you know, it was a roller motors laying there in a pile, no fenders, the tanks were there, you know, just, hey, go check, you know, long story short, it was a thousand bucks, ended up buying it and just started restoring it. And almost a year to the day, I'd come home on the weekends and in college and I'd built that thing, you know, built a motor, me and a friend built it and got running. Yeah, and then so a year or two later, my younger brother, he was six years younger than I am. So, so I had that when I was like 20, 20. So my brother's 14. So we got this when he was 15. And he used to ride this to high school, his junior, senior year. I want to serve a car. Yeah. So, I mean, this hasn't ran for years, but I mean, it, it, it cleaned, the, cleaned the gas. It'd kick it, you know, it'll start. It's just a little magneto. I mean, it had, we had a dummy tail light on it and dummy headlight. I mean, no, nothing worked. So that's a 67 shovel head motor and tranny. I don't know if those are Sugar Bear or... It looks like a Sugar Bear. Yeah, it, yeah but Sugar Bear, I, th I think it has Sugar Bear forks, but these are, I think Mondo Sugar Fork, I think. Oh, yeah, they don't had more of the... It. Yeah, were more, or either that or either that or they were cut off. You know what I mean? So... And that's what, what's crazy about that is, is, you know, uh, I got a customer of mine that's from Northern Iowa. Um, and this gentleman was down getting some work done on his truck. And then he's sitting around talking with my dad. They're about the same age. And just start talking about the Jeep in the picture behind this desk. And the guy's like, where'd that end up going? He's the one I sold the guy named Max Smith. And he was down here by Corden or somewhere. And the guy's like, man, I got a lot of friends down there. He goes, and then, you know, later on that day, this, this gentleman's like, hey, I'm gonna see if I can find your dad's old Jeep. I know, all, I know all kinds of guys in that old area. I'm thinking, you're right. And Larry, about two months later, he calls me up. He's like, hey, found your dad's Jeep. I'm like, what do you mean? And he goes, that's just, just some guy's got it, you know? And so long story short, I called this kid up and bought it for $500 sight unseen. I mean, it wasn't painted like that, obviously. It was all different colors and stuff. But we got it home and then 
Um, there's a guy in Cedar Rapids, Scott Takes, he paints motorcycles really good. One of the air, he's an airbrush artist, fantastic guy. And uh, I'm like, well, I got a project for you. I, I, all I had was literally, I told dad, I said, I need to borrow the, the frame because I'm going to get it duplicated because if we'd ever have a fire, we'd never have another one. So, and then, you know, it was, I was gone for two months. He's like, where the hell's my picture? You know, I'm like, well, I don't know. I'll check on it. Long story short, he was using that. He drew that off of the painting of that picture, painted that thing that close. That's pretty cool. So he gave it back to my dad, you know, had, he had two guys on his pit crew. One guy's local, another guy lives, hadn't seen in 20 years. But we had got dad, just kind of threw a little party and surprise party for my dad. And he walks in the shop and that was on a table under a cover. And then all the, all his old racing buddies around him, he's just kind of like, the hell, I haven't seen, you know, they just, uh, the, you know. Start it up, you wanna... What do you know about it? I said, well, I race them all, all the right, time. Pretty good. Appreciate it. Pop, they went to it. Got to pop the hell out of it. It's a Mopar. <laughs> it's been sitting there. So anyway, they've been messing with it for an hour. I just sat there and mined up the gifts, mined up the clips. Any of the gauges even work? Radio? What's that? You have a project, one of those? Yeah, yeah, a long time ago. Runs good. Like, 15 years ago. But, but I mean, that's another story. I tell you what, dude, this car, that thing going down the road is a rattle box. Like, every single thing that can squeak makes noise. You get in this thing, and I, I drive it like, it, it is yeah, it just, quiet. So, I mean, how many cars have you bought and sold in your day? I don't know how many we've bought or sold, honestly. I mean, if you want to know how many cars we've bought and sold, we've bought lots of cars. We've sold. I mean, you're some talking about hundreds, them. right? Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. We've sold 60. we've, we've, we've sold bought probably a thousand cars, um, but we've probably yeah we probably sell fifty a year or something like that. We're growing though. We're we're going. I mean, well, we sold a crap ton in. We sold a bunch of Georgia two years in a row. Yeah, so that, that added like, to it. That was 70 cars just by itself. Yeah. Just liquidating. Those weren't really cars. Junkers, though. half cars. Yeah. This, <laughs> third, every every third two cars. or three was one. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, we get, so. So yeah, January 2001, right here. That's the ad where I found the Superbird. I can't. That's great. Was that ever? 20K. Amazing. <laughs> you know, I might you had to, how much tell you what. Why don't, to get it to look like. Yeah, it might be. Uh, you actually take a screenshot of that because yeah. it's actually kind of cool just to look at. Here's a 446 pack, yeah, automatic orange for 69.9. Look at this 70 RT 444 speed, 17 grand or offer. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> look at this. 440 column automatic, Alpine white, six pack ad, nice rust free car. Take a 39,750. Wow. Here's a 69 Charger SE, 5,000. <laughs> 5,900 for Roadrunner. That clock's cool too. Yeah, it is. Yeah, my wife found that somewhere, in like an antique store. <laughs> She sent a picture. She's like, do you like this? I said, yeah, it looks like an old tack out of a GTO or something. Yeah, they don't make stuff like they used to. Yeah, so I got that. And just that I got from an old gentleman in Des Moines who kind of took me under his wings when I got my, that first Indian. When I was, he was helping me teach me how to, you know, what was right, what was wrong, and, and all that. And uh, he had a place out by Easter Lake in Des Moines. Bar and he had, they want to talk about full of motorcycle parts. He was full of motorcycle parts. And we literally took a shopping cart through. He was like, okay, you need some, you need some 18 inch rims. They're gonna be up there. So grab two rims and come over here. Here's a hardtail frame, here's a rigid frame. Here's a front end. Uh, here, here's a motor, this 38 motor. You know, we just, just, just grab parts, you know, like put this box, you know, and just, and, I, and he had an old MG that was green and he had emphysema and he wasn't in very good health, but he, he always wanted that MG to be red. So he's like, you, you take this and you paint this thing red 
and I'll trade you for all the motorcycle parts. What's the patch? This old patch, he's like, I found this, I've had this patch that I don't know who had it, my grandpa or something, but that's an old Indian original patch. And then check, so see that postcard? Yeah. You want to see what's really wild? Look where it's postmarked. Oh, look at that. Oscaloosa, Iowa. Wow. What's that, is it 1917? Yep. That's insane. And then that's what, so, so well, Indian motor, you know, so I was, I was really into the motorcycles before the cars. You know, so I got the David Mann picture. <clears throat> so I got, that's always been my favorite. This is called Deuce, you know, just be, I mean, just old school hot rods and, and motorcycles, man. You don't, you don't get any cooler than that. But this is a cool piece here. So the same guy that painted the, the, the Jeep, I, I, he does consignment stuff. So that's a piece of aluminum that I, we laser cut this piece of aluminum out and that is all airbrushed. Not hand painted, that's all airbrushed. Oh, yeah. Let's see. So we're gonna take it, we're gonna take it for a test drive. Okay. Your place is rad, bro. I super I don't rad. know why, but as a kid I always dreamed of having a garage. So I always listened to my dad come home as a kid. He'd be like, oh, I got to go so and so's house, I've got to see these cars, you know, and then I just always told myself someday. People are going to go home and say, I got to see Jeff Kelderman's car. <laughs> and then I always wanted to, I don't know why, but I always wanted a, a deck in my garage. And so the other reason is when I was telling you we're going to add on that we decided to do this is just, you know, one is my wife wanted a heated garage indoor, you know, not have to walk outside. But my other thing was, you, you know what it's like every day you go to work and you fight the battle. You got this, this walking through the trophy <laughs> collection on the way to bed is always a great way, a mindset walking to work every morning. So this is a Viper block. Yeah, that is. That, that, that's out of one of the race cars. It's, hence the hole in the top and the lifter that's stuck. So. Oh, yeah. So we just, just, we just laser cut our shit with the tube and bought this glass on, on online and just boom, we got ourselves a nice little coffee table. Trust my boy that I'm not gonna back into the side of your deal. Yeah. This one's a little cold blooded, so don't try to dump the clutch and do a burnout on camera until the engine's warmed up. Gotcha. He's gonna jump in with us. As okay. As we get going, because he'll he'll phone the he'll video. We'll see you guys, huh? Which way should we go? I just go take a right. All right. We should have done the drone, huh? No? <laughs> Wouldn't keep up. She looks good. Yeah, it, it, see how real smooth this thing is? Yeah, she goes, man. That's what I'm We're saying. In Iowa. We're in Iowa. That's what I'm saying. This car is like, it's a, it's a runner. It's a yeah. driver. I mean, you could drive this cross country. Exactly. I actually was thinking about flying in and driving it back to Texas, but I was worried about the weather. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, but listen, how quiet. I mean, yeah. there's no rattle. I even got the window down. Yeah, your your windows got to get a little noise. Yeah, she's definitely uh, well shooken down. Yeah, she drives good, man. Out here, man. Yeah, it's. I just like out. Just 
I mean, it's, it's kind of like you're off, you're in Iowa. I mean, and then, you know, where, where do I go to relax? I go to South Dakota, which is even more off the grid. <laughs> you know? Nothing, you guys, wrong, nothing and, wrong with that. And you guys are always welcome. You ever want to come out and hang out for a, a week or a long weekend and fly into Rapid City? And I got... I got We're going to have to do it. I got three side-by-sides out there, two four-seaters. And... My I son mean, has a side by side. He loves them. Three thousand miles of trails out there. Wow! So we just, you know, go out to dinner. And then we're right by this little town called Nemo, and there's a great little restaurant and bar in town. I mean, it's just, just chill. It's it's heaven. It. Yep. We don't do that enough. I know. This is you right here, yep, right? Yep. So it'll be not this drive, but the next one. You know, if I didn't have that white one, I would have I would have drove this all the time. But the white ones, we can you know, it's 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 scratched up enough. The problem with that one is it needs repainted, but it was painted in Richard Petty's shop. So how can you ever do that? Yes, I agree. We'll just leave this out here. We're gonna do the the paperwork. Yeah. So we got a deal. All right. All right Sweet. Yeah. Love it. That's good. We'll get her loaded up. Yeah, she drives good, dude. Really good. This room? Yep. I'm sure. I thought mine was bad. I was in the shop. I was in the pocket and you are in the shop. You're in the shop. You're reception. You already know that. Oh, you are? Yeah. We're in dealer too, so you write whatever you want on the title. You don't or whatever. You want to eat? You hungry? Yeah, you got let's things go somewhere. To do? No. Go somewhere? You guys want to go eat? You guys up for something? Some food? Widowmaker on cold tires, dude. Up at, uh, Thanks for your service. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Is that cool or what? <laughs> so how many GTX? You know, as you know, there are hardly any convertibles. I know, we sold get, one. 
Yeah, for one, it was a little mini, though. Put back together. I mean, it's two, so I mean, it had to be one here in the front. But I think there's only like 400 <coughs> verticals made. I don't something. even think it was that many, wasn't it? Smaller, wasn't it a lower amount than that? It might have, 16, it might have done more in 68 than 69. That's your new nickname, Carl. Gluten free Mac Daddy? Yep. Steak tips? You can pass that down. What is that? Steak tips? That's his new nickname. What's up, Steak tips? We're going to call it Steak tips. Crab Rangoon Burger? The hot ham and the bus? Yeah. So, so we'll follow, you'll follow it's us great back to meet there. you, man. You're, you're ever you, yeah. you're touring and everything. Oh, yeah. It's amazing. You ever get by, you know, you're always welcome <laughs> to stop by anytime you want. Oh. Yeah, you might not want to tell him that. He'll actually do it.